Josh from Destined for Wild here. Uh, today we're just going to take you on a walkthrough through our uh, Delica L300. So this is a 1992 Delica L300 Exceed. Uh, it was imported from Japan uh, about 10 years ago. We've had it for about the last five years. Uh, so we're going to walk you through some of the kind of the upgrades that we've done and the different little parts that we've done along the way. So we're going to start up here. We're going to start off with the front end. Uh, we've done uh, two different sets of LEDs up front. We have the nine inch pods from Vivid Lumen and Kelowna, as well as their 30 inch light bar as well. They're incredible lights. They are the brightest ones that we could possibly find. They're relatively comparable to uh, Baja Designs out of California, but they're based in Canada, which is the one thing that we like that's kind of cool. Uh, underneath, we have a uh, steel skid plate, as these vehicles are fantastic for going off-road, but unfortunately, when you don't have the skid plate, the front end is wide open and you kind of have like a big open mouth that likes to pick up rocks and that likes to smash the radiator. So thankfully we haven't done that yet, but we have broken a lot of other stuff. So we're gonna move on to the side now. We have a block heater on the front as we live in Canada. As you can see, it is very snowy and cold. It's about negative five to negative 10 right now. And as it's diesel, it does not love being very cold. Uh, we have a 30 by 9.5 on 15 inch rim BFG KO2s for tires underneath. Uh, we have the Pro, Cramp, Pro Comp Rock Crawler steel tires as well, or steel rim, sorry. These are fantastic tires. They're like heavily recommended in like basically every off-road overland community. We've loved them. We've had them on for about three years now and have had zero problems. Highly recommend them. This is the biggest size that we could go stock without having to lift anything. We did have to take off the front running boards and we did have to trim, trim the fender wells a little bit, but otherwise they did fit for the most part, but you will probably have to trim some stuff. On the other side here, can't see too, too well, but we've added a snorkel to it as well. This is one of the upgrades that was recommended the most to us, as with these engines, they like to overheat quite a bit. And with the normal uh, cold air intake, it actually sucks the engine up from, or the air from inside the engine bay. So it's hot air getting sucked in where when you add the snorkel, it helps reroute it so it's a forced cold air intake. So it actually helps cool the engine slightly. They say there's a performance uh, enhancements, but personally, I didn't really notice too much, but it was one of the things that was worth doing. Uh, as well to the front end, we've done uh, the Delica L400 brake upgrade. Those come on both the um, L400s as well as on the Mitsubishi Monteros. So upgrades to a bigger dual piston caliper. So it actually gives a little bit of a better stopping power as well. In doing that as well, we also upgraded to steel braided brake lines. As with these vehicles being as old as they are, the old rubber lines do get quite squishy and the brakes do often, they're not bad, but they're not great. So I would highly, highly recommend doing the dual piston brake upgrade if you do buy one of these vans, because it makes a huge difference. So we're gonna take you around to the back now. So one of the other things that we have done is when we bought this van, it was actually baby blue and white on the bottom. That's where it actually got its nickname uh, Gertie from. As when I first bought it, I showed Vanessa when we were just dating and she called it uh, Gertrude because <laughs> it looked like an old lady's car. So we wanted to change it up a little bit. And personally, I've always been a huge fan of matte colors. And I really like the idea of having like the matte gray. So this is actually Battleship Gray. And so the top section of it is wrapped. It was wrapped by uh, Graphic Enterprises in Vernon, which did an amazing job. And then the bottom is just painted black as it's a little bit easier to clean up when kind of getting scratches off road and things like that. Now we'll go to the back. Through the back here, uh, there's been a few different things that we've done. So we have uh, two LED pods off the back here as on these vans, the backup lights are kind of trash. So that was one thing that I wanted to change pretty quick. We also have a three hitch uh, trailer hitch, which is fantastic. We've only used it a handful of times for bike racks, things like that. But there's actually a couple companies that you can actually get different swing arms and things for um, uh, different tire swings and stuff. So we might get one of those in the future, but we're still kind of talking about it. Uh, we have a ladder on the back as well that usually leads to our roof rack. But uh, currently with it being the winter, it is taken off and we're getting our roof rack refabricated right now. Uh, so we're getting it reinforced as over the years of lots of off-road trails, our rack has kind of come loose a few times, so we were getting that reinforced, and to be honest, I just didn't feel like putting it back on before the winter. So we left that off for right now, but you'll see that in some of our spring videos. Uh, usually when the roof rack is on, we do have an awning down the side as well, but that's off right now, and we do also have side lights that are usually on, as that's really nice when you pull into camp late at night, 
and you're able to light up around the vehicle. Uh, underneath, we've upgraded to a uh, two and a half inch free flow stainless steel exhaust. As with the exhaust on this, usually they're kind of like a little pop can and it's a little loud and not very nice. And with these engines as well, another upgrade that's recommended is if you do upgrade to the 2.5 inch exhaust, it does help cool down the engine a little bit apparently. Again, people often say there's power upgrades and things like that. I didn't really notice anything, but I figured, you know what? I may as well do everything I can to make sure this little engine has as much power and as much help as she can get. So that's everything for the outside. Now let's jump on into the inside. All right. So here is the inside. This is a JDM, so it's right-hand drive. Um, so up front here we have some light bar switches right here and one right there. We have a USB port plug-in as well and also a voltmeter. We have bigger cup holders because we usually have Nalgene size water bottles so it's nice to have the extra space for that. Um, right here we have um, a racing wheel it actually came with it when we bought it which is pretty funny it has a really funny sounding horn <laughs> you can hear that um, Josh wrapped this with a paracord just to give it more grip because it was pretty worn down and that is also here there is a EGT gauge to read the temperature of the engine because we don't want it to overheat at all whenever we're driving um, also we have a Inclometer. We actually didn't have this when we bought it. Um, this came from another one. Our friends had one too and they sold it to us. So we're really stoked about this. This part doesn't work, but this one does, but we might figure out how to fix it. <laughs> uh, we have a sunroof up here. And we also have our hula girl, just to add some vibes. <laughs> and I think that's pretty much it up here. Oh, also, I forgot, we have wind deflectors that Josh installed as well because it is very noisy in here. When we first got this, it was so loud driving on the highway, we couldn't hear each other talking, but we actually put lots of soundproofing like on the floor. We took up all the carpet, well Josh did, took up all the carpets, put on the sound deadening material, and that made a huge difference. And then we also added this because it was still kind of windy when we were driving highway. So now it's pretty good and quiet in here. It's still a little bit loud because it's a diesel and it's older but it works pretty good okay now we're gonna show you the back so in here we have a bed platform uh, built out here right here is a uh, kind of like the back of a bench that we will flip up with this bracket here right now it's in bed mode so we just leave it um, we also have a cooler stand over in the corner there uh, eventually we were gonna put a fridge there but right now we just use a Yeti Underneath it is just some extra cubby storage for miscellaneous stuff, gear, anything like that. Underneath we have some drawers here too. Um, they're pretty good for storing our food and stuff. We do food on that side mostly and on the other side we do our clothes. Um, I'll show you inside some more. All right, so over here we have some shelving. We just mostly store like uh, toiletries, stuff like that, camping gear, extra towels, blankets, stuff. Underneath here is also a big cavity near the tire well, and we'll put big blankets there and towels too. Um, we have some little lights here for mood lighting. Also, we have a hook for jackets and hoodies, and we have these curtains also. All around, we uh, redid the material on them. They came with like this really grungy old stuff on the stock one, so Josh actually took the mounts from the old one and sold some new ones and they work pretty good. Um, also above here we have our crystal light skylight. Um, it usually has these shades that are motorized and use these buttons here to move them but actually they have these little clips in them that don't like heat and it's pretty hot here in the summer so they melted. So we've tried to fix them but hasn't been successful so we decided just to leave them. We actually put these in there when we're camping to keep it warm and dark <laughs> in the meantime. Um, I'll show you more in the back on the other side though. I'll open the hatch here and show you the back. So in the winter these struts don't like to stay up so Josh actually has to hold it open with his head while we film. But anyways, <laughs> in the back here we have some more big drawers. Um, I can show you what they look like. We do mostly like our cooking gear in here and like plates and utensils, stuff like that. Over here is some more storage. We should do more food or surf gear, stuff like that. Um, we have this cutting board that we got made to fit in here as well. 
and also kind of act as a cooktop, which is really nice. Um, over here we have another cubby. It's got pretty deep storage, which is great. And it latches, which is awesome as well. And then here Josh has some more USB ports installed so we can charge our phones and stuff at night. And on this side, we have another compartment that lifts up too. On the other side, the tire wall over here. And we just store like shoes and stuff in there as well. But this is pretty much the inside. Um, we also want to shout out our friend, Tim Edwards, for helping us build out this. We couldn't have done it without him and he did a really good job and we're so excited about it. Um, but this is our build. If you have any questions about the van, uh, just ask away and we'll answer to the best of our knowledge. <laughs> Uh, two other quick things I wanted to mention that uh, we've done to the vehicle mechanically that we forgot to mention originally. Uh, with this, we have done something called an EGR delete, which is something that's more common in diesels, which is uh, you remove something called the EGR, which recirculates the exhaust back to the engine. So that's another thing that's highly recommended. So we actually did that and plated it. And in doing that, we added a uh, EGT, which is an exhaust gas temperature reader, which is this gauge right up here that Vanessa mentioned. You can actually see uh, recording the temperature of the engine as we're driving. As with these engines, uh, the engine is made with two different types of metals, so they're prone to cracking the heads, unfortunately. So we've added that. As well, a thing that we are finding is pretty rare with most Delicas. Ours actually has AC as well. We had to retrofit it, but we live in the Okanagan. So this summer it got up to, I think it peaked around 37 or 47 degrees. So living here without AC is, you can do it, but it's not really manageable. So that's another one of the upgrades that we did to Gertie. So thanks for watching our walkthrough of our Van Gertie. I uh, really appreciate it. If you guys have any more questions or anything or comments, uh, please leave them below or you can message us on Instagram and I'll gladly answer anything that you might want to know because I know way too much about these vans at this point. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for following along guys. And we want to thank um, everyone that's been supporting us and encouraging us along the way. Yep, yeah, appreciate everybody who's helped us with this van along the way as well, as we really couldn't have done it without any of the help that we've had. So appreciate you guys. Have a good one. All right, bye. Bye.